kinds of different elements to like folk arts and, and folk music. It's music of the people, right? So, which inevitably leads to a lot of, a lot of gray, a lot of confusion. Some people understand folk music to be like singer-songwriter. Some people think of it as the kind of music that we play. I feel like it's a natural progression for our folk music in this province to start looking different over time. It's sort of like a, a feeling as well. It's almost easier to ask what is not the folk music. There was a time when people were kind of mildly embarrassed about being Newfoundlanders and they were sort of embarrassed about uh, about accordion music and nobody knew who Emil Benoit was and nobody knew who Rufus Ginsherd was, you know? These were just dudes playing at dances in small towns. The folk music scene that was really like ignited by that revival in the 70s has pretty consistently just kept rolling on. Every now and then there's a new band that reinvigorates it like in the late 80s or early 90s, you know, the Irish descendants were huge and they created all uh, this uh, new interest in, in Newfoundland music, especially the Irish influenced music from the Southern Shore. Oh, Albert Moody says he loves her, all the boys are fighting for her. And then after them, there came this other wave of like the Ennis sisters and, and groups like that in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And now we're moving into, we have like the Dardanelles and the Wants who are in introducing original material, but also staying true to, you know, the, the folk tradition. It takes a lot to leave. It takes much more to stay. The first time that the three of us really started um, making music together would have been in uh, the summer of 2006. Uh, we, were doing, we were doing uh, the summer theatre festival out in Trinity, working with Rising Tide Theatre. So we were all yeah, up there together. One year, uh, you and I have worked together. 2004. And you two had worked together 2005. as well. 2005. And then in 2006, we were all mm -hmm. together. And, and then there was a show that they needed to do. And they needed September people. 9th, 4 o'clock. <laughs> 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 Probably. It sounded good enough that we just kept going. And Phil and Jerry have, I mean, also had the, the added benefit of, of uh, being a couple. Like they'd already been together for, for several years at that point. <laughs> So, so you guys, so you guys already well, had a bit of that. Well, we had played, but even before we, were, even yeah. before we were hanging out that way, we were singing music. <laughs> hanging out, that hanging way. out that way. Settle down. <clears throat> clean, Excuse keep me. it clean. <laughs> no, this is this is a family festival, Geraldine. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> to me to need so much less infrastructure like folk music can live you know yeah. in, in the back of a van in a field right? yeah you just pop the end up and then there's your show yeah. Yeah. you know like it doesn't require full backline and lighting and you know but it can do that drone too. shots but it can do that too it can do all of those things but it can also just exist around this table and people will come and say like oh we saw a great show oh where was it i was at the picnic table in front of the, the snack, snack shack it was killer yeah you know <laughs> I always think folk music is just, without oversimplifying, is just it's just it's music of the people, right? So, which inevitably leads to a lot of a lot of gray, a lot of confusion, because the people are so diverse, right? Like we're all we're all so diverse, but because of that, you end up having this beautifully huge umbrella of of backgrounds, of of styles, of influences. So I think like I think folk music is actually is actually quite a quite a deep well. It's hard, it's, it's kind of compartmentalized, but only into three compartments, I guess. Like there's the bar bands, you know, which is a great time. And then there's traditional sessions, which is all tunes or mostly tunes. And then, well, I don't know, really know what the third compartment is. Oh, I'm singer-songwritery songwritery types. Yeah. 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 So, 
you know, naturally we, and we sort of don't fit into either of those things, to be honest with you. Who stole a rack for mini spoons? It was here before. A piece of board cut out like Newfoundland and Labrador. 47 mini teaspoons, 47 towns. On the wall since 82 and never taken down. It was Dave Penny is a folk musician. And even though a lot of the recitations that he does, and a lot of the songs that he sings, he's written himself. But they're in, they're definitely Newfoundland music. There is no worm farm or a sod farm. Nothing even handy. It was made up, sure I don't think there even is a dandy. Don't believe a word you hear in goobies. <laughs> All of his subject matter of his songs are like local references. It's, it's totally local cultural experiences, you know? It's a great example of original contemporary folk music. I'm the one out licking shopping carts, I hate to say. It's what a fellow said to me from three meters away. They didn't mention me by name, he said, but I think maybe someone caught me in the act and spoke to Dr. Haggy. My sort of thing to perform, you know, wasn't serious ballads, it was uh, comic songs, right? Mm -hmm. In the Kenneth Peacock collection, there were only so many sections called comic ditties, and I ended up running out. Meanwhile, there was this sort of, oh, I love to write songs. Like, it's just, I mean, everybody wants to be something, and that's what I wanted to be, you know, I guess. <laughs> Tunes are, are jigs, reels. You know, diddly, 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 diddly. The diddly diddly stuff. <laughs> Tunes generally are like a traditional session is wall to wall jigs and reels and hornpipes and singles and, you know, the scatter song, but for the most part, jigs and reels, really. You know, so a tune is the muscles in the corner. A song is saltwater joys. You know what I mean? <laughs> term running the goat which is like a set number of seven or eight tunes you do all these dance moves like Cuba Sonics do the running the goat <laughs> traditional dance music of Newfoundland originally from Ireland that's been uh, fermenting in Newfoundland for 500 years and then uh, this Ukrainian band uh, draws on that tradition as well and like seamlessly integrates it with with their tradition and uh, it's amazing I grew up in, uh, in, I'm from Winnipeg originally, so I grew up there, but my dad's originally from Saskatchewan. So our, like our family's from Western Ukraine, and at the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, uh, the Canadian government was trying to settle the prairies of Canada, and they were looking for farmers from Europe, mostly wheat farmers and stuff like that, and that's the, the part of Ukraine where my family's from looks almost identical to Manitoba or Saskatchewan or Alberta. I think I was a young teen when I settled in, I started to learn, taking lessons on keyboard instruments and then stuck with that for a while. But little by little, all of this weird stuff crept in, including like the cymbala, that, that hammered dulcimer kind of instrument that I play a lot. My dad played the fiddle and my grandfather played the fiddle and my great-grandfather played the fiddle. And in Ukrainian, in the folk music, if you want to call it that, the traditional music from the part of Ukraine that they're from, uh, usually it was fiddle and it's cymbala, like those two instruments were kind of the mainstay of uh, for dance music and stuff like that, so I kind of gravitated a little bit toward that. <laughs> People used to invite me to come play by myself on various weird instruments and there was a dance festival happening in Edmonton and one of the organizers asked me to come and play there and at the time my brother uh, my brother played the drums and he happened to be in Edmonton he had a summer job in Edmonton for and was living with me and I always had this idea of like taking the old-time music but twisting it around and adding like all kinds of other elements to it <laughs> We 
had the kind of Alberta version of Kubasonics, they were, well, I would talk about weird stuff like going to a wedding, but saying the words in, in English so that people like my cousins who felt like they were Ukrainian but didn't speak the language, they could say, oh yeah, we remember that or that's something we can relate to. We've kind of, we've gravitated away from, you know, like anybody can play a country tune and make it sound exactly like a country tune, but not everybody can play a Ukrainian tune that has a country feel to it. They kind of evolved over the years, you know, people kind of came and went in and then as my own kids were growing up, I used to let them come along to shows and and same like my old uncles used to let me sit in, so we let them sit in and, and they learned how to do all, all of this stuff and now they do it better than I do, so. Technically this band has been on the go since I was a toddler, um, and I kind of grew up with it, but it's really cool to be, you know, kind of like a, a full-time member now and uh, have more of a voice in this chapter of it in the past seven years. In Ukrainian, uh, it's really popular um, saying is uh, Slava Ukraini, which means glory to Ukraine, and Heroim Slava means glory to the heroes. This piece is called Heroim Slava. Heroim Slava! <laughs> <laughs> Historically, folk music has been this catalyst for, for change and for activism. As we are kind of, I guess, the most uh, prominent Ukrainian group, at the, it, at the beginning of this war, at least, we were, and now there's, you know, many more Ukrainians moving to Newfoundland and Labrador, but a lot of people did kind of turn to us because um, they didn't maybe know any other Ukrainian people personally. And so we, we felt like, you know, an obligation, but also an opportunity to like, to use our voice to, to raise awareness about what's happening and, um, and let people know how they can help out in any way that they are able. And, uh, you know, I think if you, if you have a platform, um, where you where you get to address like crowds of people i think it is important you know when there's injustice in the world to to stand up and and say something about that This idea of, of tradition, of multiple generations, I think is important in, in kind of trying to suss out what folk music is. One of my earliest experiences of participating in folk music was uh, back in the late 80s, uh, the show On the Road Again with Wayne Ronstadt. Uh, they did an episode on my grandfather and O'Brien's music and my grandfather tried to teach him how to play the accordion and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have, wish, a, cu I have a customer here. <laughs> we did a, a, a shoot up at the family cabin where um, my, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and all my cousins, we all kind of got together for a big sing-along and they, they filmed us singing uh, Sonny's Dream. That's kind of my earliest uh, experience of actually like 
perform, uh, you know, participating in, in folk music was that, that uh, shoot for the TV show, which is a pretty cool experience and a great memory as well. Yeah. As far back as I can remember, uh, you know, whenever we would go to visit my grandmother and, and before he passed away, my grandfather, uh, we would come to the music store and go upstairs and see Nan and Pop. Um, so the music store was a, like always part of my world. Like it seemed perfectly normal for my grandparents to live above a music store. O'Brien's. When my uncle uh, had to give up the, the store, I was like, well, I, I do it. Like, you know, I, I, I worked here for, for years and years and it seemed like a natural fit and I felt like I knew the vibe of the place and what it had always been and, and I thought I could uh, sort of kind of still maintain uh, the folk cred of the place but also uh, modernize it a bit and maybe expand uh, you know the kind of music that we were trying to represent a little bit as well. I should be falling asleep instead of falling Why does Silver Wolf Band always have this tag of folk rock? I think it's because we sing a lot about where we're from. We think we sing about the people and the places that, you know, of Labrador. And I think that's what makes us folk rock. We're heavy on the rock when it comes to the music portion of it. But in terms of if you listen to the words, it's very folk inspired. We talk about where we're from, we talk about things that maybe certain people who are outside of the province might not recognize that as a folk element or something that's specific to Labrador. My biggest folk influence for sure growing up would have been my great uncle Gerald Mitchell, the Labrador Balladeer as they called him. Overlooking the waters of Lake Melville so grand. A lot of the musical influence of Labrador in particular was really interesting because there was a lot of American uh, military influence and I think country music came up there really early and uh, so when you listen to like Gerald Mitchell as Bond referred to there, he has a lot of stuff very country sounding. From when I first got into music, much like you, I started looking towards like who are the Bob Dylans and the Neil Youngs of Labrador, you know? Like Harry Martin. Take care of my world, and I'll take care of you. And I, I listened to Harry Martin, I was like, I just absolutely love how it sounds kind of like something you could hear. Um, like uh, Gordon Lightfoot or somebody like that singing, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And but he's singing about Labrador. There's a land of boundless beauty where the untamed rivers run, and majestic snow capped mountains rise to meet the morning sun. And then there's like this folk legend about him kind of grew that, you know, he's this conservation officer who lives in Cartwright Paradise River. And everybody's like, you know, he could have toured everywhere. He could have went anywhere, you know. He could have been our Ron Hines, you know what I mean? But he just loved staying there. But he wrote these really beautiful ballads basically about Labrador, the land that he loves, and little stories and things. But his songs are so beautiful and, and the depth of them really inspired me to start writing music. And I think that's why I kind of gravitated more towards the folk style of music. And I do agree, and I think you would too, that, you know, we're more, when we say sometimes like we're entering into folk categories, it feels a little uncomfortable. Yes, it does. Yeah. But we're often reminded that, you know, our, our beginnings, our roots do come from that same tradition of folk, I would say. Thank you. There was a time when the violin wasn't too popular. You know, everybody wanted to be uh, Jimi Hendrix or whatever, or you know, play the electric guitar. And now you got kids playing the fiddle, playing the accordion. You know, again, we were at a at the launch for the for this year's folk festival. You know, where they're announcing the lineup. You know, there's a group of young guys 
uh, they're still in junior high school and they'll be playing at playing on the big stage of the folk festival, you know, and they take accordion lessons from either Mark Hiscock or, or Aaron Collis or whatever, one of those fellows who's also, you know, teaching, teaching uh, young kids all the traditional accordion tunes. Newfoundland itself is a place where a kid doesn't have to feel like a dork because he wants to play the accordion or a, or or the fiddle. Like you know, you don't have to try and be cool. Like playing the accordion, it can be cool. You know what I mean? I, I guess it's, it's music for the people. I think this, the interesting thing about folk music is that it is like a living and breathing uh, sort of tradition. Like folk music is there to remind us that ultimately we have a lot more in common uh, with each other than, than we don't. Folk music kind of varies over space, whereas pop music varies over time. I didn't see Tina Turner when she was here. But I did see all the Buddy West's name and the other fellows' concerts. It's just the way it went. The lines are very blurry uh, for defining folk music, and there's also this geographic element. So, like we, you know, uh, folk music in Newfoundland is, uh, you know, we, it, we, where we're on an island, we can kind of hone in and kind of like focus on what is folk music in Newfoundland. But of course, there's folk music from all other parts of North America and Europe and, and Asia, and then you will get influences from other folk traditions that get mixed into areas. So it's it's a hard thing to define, absolutely. So I don't I don't know what to how to describe it either. <laughs>